just use the hose on them! Well, our work is done, Phoenix. Laying a course for HQ. You got it, boss. Another fine harvest, Slog. You want to be congratulated. Fine harvest? Look, they're all skin and bones. I'm barely meeting my protein quota here. <laughs> it's no wonder you're Orion Burger's top protein procurement agent. You're always worrying about your quota. Come. Perhaps this next assignment will be more... Lucrative for years. The planet is called Earth. Preliminary analysis indicates a high likelihood of harvestability. And this will be your test specimen. Look at him. There can't be much of a brain inside that puny skull. Testing this creature for intelligence would clearly be a waste of time. I agree, but some nosy alien rights activists have been poking around and accusing us of harvesting intelligent life forms. Oh, but it's the smart ones that give our burgers their mouth water and flavor! I know, Slug, but as long as they're watching our every move, we simply cannot risk getting caught harvesting intelligent life forms. The Earth specimen must be tested. Very well. But I have a feeling that this human will flunk with flying colors. <laughs> <laughs> a bountiful harvest to you, sloggy boy. <laughs> I like that kid. Only stupid party pooping activists. <laughs> what? Still unloading? <laughs> Love it! <laughs> Why aren't we unloaded yet? There is a slight delay. A fat one got jammed in the protein transfer tube. Well then, let's get this meat wagon moving. We got another job to do. <laughs> I'll be in my quarters reviewing the reconnaissance data. Don't disturb me until we get to Earth! Flummox! Sorry, boss. The clutch slipped. Louie, Winona, come and get it! Delicious, nutritious rodent kibble. Yum, yum! <laughs> what the? Greetings from all the nice folks in the Protein Procurement Division at Orion Burger Incorporated. <laughs> Well, it's about time. Up so daisy. <laughs> Strawnier than I would have hoped. Getting paid by the Tarakilo for these second row planets is no way to make a living. Well, what are you waiting for, you flying jello mold? Strap them down. I don't have all day. A hundred billion neurocytes. Is that good, boss? It's pitiful. 
I'm amazed that this creature was able to crawl out of the primordial lose with such a sorry excuse for a brain. Okay, boss. Everything's set to go. Are you ready? Um, am I ready for what? Why, neurosynaptic testing, of course. Who are you guys? Oh, how rude of me. I am Flummox, and this is Senior Protein Procurement Agent Slarg. Protein Procurement Agent? That's right. We're purveyors of premium protein for Orion Burger Incorporated, the largest fast food chain in the entire galaxy. Your planet has been identified as a candidate for protein harvesting. So, uh, you guys are gonna make hamburgers out of me? That's the general idea, human! Where am I? You're in geosynchronous orbit directly above your Earth settlement. You mean this is a spaceship? Oh joy, Flummox! We found ourselves a complete idiot! Yeah! Imagine being in geosynchronous orbit without a spaceship! <laughs> oh, that's rich! <laughs> Why are you testing me? We're testing you to find out if Earthlings are intelligent or not. You see, intelligent life is an extremely scarce resource in the universe. We wouldn't want to grind it up in our Orion burgers by accident, would we, boss? Oh, of course not. That would be just... Uh, terrible! Uh, d -d don't you want me to take you to my leader? No, we don't test leaders anymore. They were failing our intelligence tests so badly that we had to switch to randomly selected test specimens. So, you're our randomly selected Earthling. <laughs> Lucky me. Um, w w w what is neuro... whatchamacallit testing? That's neurosynaptic testing, bucko! Quite simply, we're going to apply a simulated nerve impulse to your cerebral cortex and measure how much juice your primitive little noodle can handle. Simulated nerve impulse? Um, will it hurt? Gee, uh, I don't know. Does it hurt, boss? With any luck at all, it'll be excruciating! What are these things on my head? They're electrodes, you ninny! Can't apply simulated nerve impulses without electrodes! <laughs> That's what I was afraid of! What do I have to do to pass this test? Just relax your nerve fibers and conduct as much of the impulse as you possibly can. What happens if I fail the test? Hello? Are you paying any attention at all? If you fail, we harvest your planet! Speaking of harvesting, Flummox, get on with the test! Okay, boss. Be gentle. What a huge surprise. This special brain barely conducts at all. And it's such a headache when you do that. Send this wretched mass of protoplasm back to his planet. I'll hold him up with the rest of those ignorant earthlings. And then clean up this mess! Aye, aye, boss. Ahem. Come on, you. Ah. <laughs> uh, excuse me. What do you want? Do you have anything for a headache? Headache? Yeah, sure. I got something for your headache. <laughs> what is this thing that I'm in? It's an abductatron model 2000, I think. I'm gonna use it to send you back to Earth to the exact time and place that you were abducted from. Phew. I thought I was gonna be burger meat. Don't be silly. You failed the test. Of course you're gonna be burger meat. You and the rest of your sorry planet. So, why are you sending me back to Earth then? 
Don't you think I have better things to do than lug you all the way back down to the cargo hold? I'm sending you back to Earth so that we can harvest you with the rest of your pathetic species. Uh, couldn't we talk this over? What's to talk about? I'm starving! Why is that gun thingy pointing at my head? Oh, that? It's just a neutrino pulse gun. I fire it at your brain, and it erases your short-term memory. Nothing to get worked up about. Why are you erasing my memory? Boy, you're just full of questions, aren't you? Well, for your information, I have to erase your memory. It's standard abduction protocol. You see, we send you back to the exact time and place we snatched you from, with no memory of your abduction. That way, you don't know you were gone, and no one else knows you were gone either. Pretty clever, don't you think? Uh, I suppose so. Of course, none of this matters a whole lot in your case. You know, with your planet about to be harvested and all. Mm. I suppose not. All right, we're ready to go. On behalf of all the nice folks in Orion Burger's Protein Procurement Division, I would like to thank you for your cooperation during our testing procedures. Have a super day! Ah! The Geochrono Safe Unit! Oh dear, this means that the human's memory wasn't erased. Well, I know I sent him back, but, but I can't exactly tell where, or when. Could be next week, could be last year, who knows? Oh, the boss isn't gonna like this one bit. I'm deep in gastrointestinal expulsion material. Wait a minute. This isn't where I was abducted from. One o'clock. This isn't when I was abducted from either. It was closer to two. Oh, this is really weird. I wonder if this means that I'm gonna be abducted again. Harry's Barbershop is a Boonsville landmark. That's of no interest. There hasn't been a decent movie here since the last Studley McCork flick. Afternoon, Wilbur. Hiya, Harry. Wow, your TV sure has a great picture. That's because I got it hooked up to my new satellite dish. Ain't modern technology wonderful? Still the only barber in town. Huh? I tell you, I don't know nothing about that other barber who tried to set up shop. I have no idea what became of him. No idea at all. Anyways, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. The label says, Magic Hair Styling Wax. Guaranteed to hold your due no matter what you do, or your money refunded. Hmm, that's some weird looking stuff. Hey, just leave that alone. The Lazy Susan sure keeps your barbering supplies well organized. Yep, everything's exactly where I need it. Heck, I can reach for stuff and I don't even have to look. Anything good on the tube? Well, there's always something good on TV. Here, check this out. 
The Blue Jays will be without starter Jim Clancy for a couple of weeks. He's having How many channels do you get now? I don't know. More than I can watch. But that don't stop me from trying. Baseball, the Yankees and Red Sox have completed a man-for-man swap. How do you decide which show to watch? I just kind of surf from channel to channel and let it all wash over me. Hey, you know I can get Baywatch in over 80 languages now? To rest the muscles. Could you Still possibly watch any more TV? Yeah, betcha. I got a 96-inch jumbotron on order from Fast Freddy's Discount Electronics. It has five times the screen area as the one I got now. Sounds like you're pretty happy with your dish. Still with baseball, well, let me put it this way. I can watch reruns of Charlie's Angels at any time of the day or night now. Wow. Uh, what is Charlie's Angels? Oh, you're so young, Wilbur. Still with baseball, the Yankees and Red Sox have completed a man for Well, judging by the floor, the Yankees business must be booming. To the Bo Sox in huh? Power oh, Ryan. well, actually, it's been pretty be slow lately. You're the only one who's been in here all week. Problems with his pitching elbow, and team doctors want him to sit a few games out to rest the muscles. Then why is there so much hair on the floor? Well, I've been meaning to sweep that up, and I will, just as soon as I get a little bit of free time. The Blue Jays will be without starter Jim Clancy for a couple of weeks. He's having problems. No with other customers all week. Oh, to too bad. To rest the oh, I don't mind. Still with it baseball, lets me get caught up on all my soaps. A man for man swap. The Yankees send I noticed that your barber pole isn't turning. Well, that's because Stoli broke it the, the other day. Shoot, Jim I caught him red-handed trying to jimmy it open. He said he wanted to see where all the stripes were disappearing to. To rest the muscles. Still with baseball, the Yankees and Red Sox have completed a man-for-man -man swap. The Yankees send Ricky Henderson to the Bo Sox in exchange for power for Jim Rice. The Gross! A scarecrow filled with human hair! I'll have to admit, though, Harry made a pretty decent likeness of himself. What a big dish! I'll bet Aunt Polly could whip up one heck of a stir-fry in that! Uh-oh. Sounds like I messed up Harry's reception. Miss the bonus rounds. Colonel Birds. Yeah, I'm too old for this. I should go back to my old rabbit ears. Anybody home? Hmm. Not back down from the roof yet. Hmm. The label says, Magic Hair Styling Wax. Guaranteed to hold your due no matter what you do, or your money refunded. Hmm. That's some weird looking stuff. Who's out there? You again. I was up on the roof. Didn't hear you come in. Rerun. How's your new satellite dish working? Oh, it's working just fine. Well, except for those 
damn pigeons. What are the pigeons doing to your dish? Oh, they keep landing on it and moving it so it points in the wrong direction. Nobody messes up my TV reception. Sounds like a frustrating problem. It was driving me nuts. Must have been up on that roof at least a dozen times last week, shooing off them birds and re-aiming the dish. The dish seems to be working okay now. Well, that's because I put a scarecrow up on the roof. Mm -hmm. Birds ain't gone near that dish ever since. A scarecrow? That's a clever solution. Yep, works like a charm. <laughs> it even scared the wife. <laughs> yeah, she thinks it looks like me. Did I mention that I've been abducted by aliens? That's so. Well, you just be sure to tell them to keep their flying saucers away from those TV satellites up there. I'm having enough trouble with pigeons mucking with my dish down here. I'd like a haircut, please. Well, step right up. I was wondering how much longer you was going to let that mop grow. Now, how's about that piece that keeps falling in your eye? Want me to snip it? Nope. Just a little off the sides, please. Kids today, with their long hair and love beads. Wilbur, well, don't be moving around while I'm cutting your hair. Now, how's about some styling wax to keep that awful cowlick down? Mind if I do? Alrighty then. All right, Wilbur. That'll be eight buckaroos. Put it on my tab, Harry. You don't have a tab, Wilbur. Come on, I'm good for it. Yeah, that's what all you long-haired kids say. Oh, all right. Pay me next time, Wilbur. See ya, Harry. <laughs> Kid still looks like a sheepdog. That's the shop where I work. It's the only decent paying job in town that doesn't involve tossing hogs. Home sweet home. Doesn't look very important. Aunt Polly? Be with you in a minute. Where are you? Woo! <coughs> oh dear, nearly bruised my bumper. Good thing this new girl came equipped with airbags. <laughs> What in the world were you doing? Just a little dusting, Wilbur. It was as dirty as a chimney in there. How are you feeling today, Aunt Polly? Oh, I'm having a good day today. Just some minor arthritic pain, acid indigestion, rheumatism.
might see some dizzy spells, and I think I passed something this morning. That's good to hear. I just wish the exterminator would hurry up and get here. Then I'd feel even better. I'll bet my gerbils got out of their cage again. That's all. Aw, oh, look at the smile on Lucky's face. Must be before we had him fixed. Aunt Polly says she would have given her eye teeth to meet the king. Actually, she probably would have given her a whole set of dentures. I think it's Aunt Polly in her younger days. Or it could be Uncle Lou after the operation. Nothing remarkable about that. Study McQuark issue number 483. A classic! My limited edition Studley McQuark Puzz Dispenser! Boy, I had to eat an awful lot of puzz to get enough proofs of purchase to qualify for that. Doesn't look very important. That's of no interest. Doesn't look very important. Studley McQuark! My idol! I wonder what he would do in a situation like this. Freaky picture. <laughs> Aunt Polly painted it one time when she took the wrong medication. It's Uncle Lou. Before the operation. Ooh, you kidding me? <laughs> you actually see a rich plumber in my future, Miss Sabrina? Ooh, what? And he's good looking too! Wee! No one's looked at my pipes in a long time. <laughs> Whoops! I gotta go, Miss Sabrina. Did you just call that psychic hotline again? Hmm. Well, yes. See you later. All right, Wilbur. When Eugene isn't working in the kitchen, he's under the hood working on his old clunker. That's of no interest.
the original greasy spoon. Hi, Vera. Well, look what the cat dragged in. Ha! Your cat couldn't even drag itself out of bed. Oh, you're one to talk, Eugene. What with you getting up at the crack of noon every day? Even the mice know better than to eat here. The cheese is still in the trap. Wilbur, why don't you just sit down and order from the menu like a normal person? Uh, classy. Vera says this flea-infested thing ruins her decor, but I'm not sure what decor she's talking about. What are you reading? Interior Design Illustrated. Are you planning to do some renovating? Yeah, I want to board up the order window so I don't have to look at the jerk in the kitchen no more. <laughs> I'm a jerk. Who's the one who wants to redo the diner like freaking Bucking Horse Palace? I'm sorry, Wilbur. You'll have to excuse my husband's locker room language. Locker room? Oh, I'd like to lock her in a room. <laughs> yeah. With a boa constrictor. Who am I kidding? I couldn't do that. Not to a snake! How are you planning to redecorate the place? Well, I'm going for a real Art Nouveau motif. Imagine, if you will, a chrome Venus de Milo in the corner next to the fake flamingo pond. The seats are covered with a nice leopard skin vinyl. There's bangles and dingle balls around every window. Oh, and there's neon lights everywhere. Nice, Vera. Real nice. I never noticed your fountain before. Is it new? I just got it. I'm trying to lend an air of class to this joint to offset the tackiness of Eugene's moose head. Hey! I put that up there for you, Vera! It looks just like your mother! You leave my mother out of this, you hairy baboon! The fountain sure is, uh, classy. It sure is. Ain't it just an eyeful? Eyeful? Looks more like an eyesore. Oh, what do you know? Your idea of decorating is to hang roadkill on the walls. Why do you need a mousetrap if you have a cat? The only thing that lazy furball knows how to catch is 40 winks! You're skating on thin ice, Eugene. You ought to know, you frigid old bat! Jerk. The truth of the matter, Wilbur, is that Muffin is too precious to be chasing icky old mice. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Kind of quiet in here today, isn't it? Oh, yeah, but you should have seen us a few hours ago. You know those hungry construction workers from the new bridge? They all come over here for lunch now. Look, Wilbur, are you going to order something to eat or not? Last time I ate here, there was a dead fly in my soup. Yeah, it's the heat that kills them. I just remembered. I gotta go now. Well, don't let me keep you.
Steve Nero's synaptic bandwidth is right off the scale for a Gamma-class life form. Whoa! What a trip! What, what happened? What happened? What happened? You passed my test! That's what happened! <laughs> How those puny neurons conducted that pulse, I'll never know! There must be a malfunction in the system! The results are accurate, boss. He passed fair and square. Fair and square? Fair and square? Don't ever use those words around me again! Now throw them in the break while I prepare the next test! Fair and square. I'll be back for you in a few minutes, so don't go anywhere! <laughs> Keep it down! I'm on your side! Uh, exactly what side would that be? The side that's trying to prevent creatures like you from being ground up into burger meat. Oh, well, that definitely sounds like the side that I'm on. Who are you? My name is Astral. I'm a member of the Planet Huggers. What are Planet Huggers? It's an organization dedicated to the preservation of intelligent life throughout the galaxy. We oppose Orion Burger's barbaric process of planetary destruction. But we meet on the first Thursday of every month. What do you mean exactly by planetary destruction? I mean total bio-extermination. Oh, if you feel one of their intelligence tests, you'll see for yourself how awful it is. I'm sorry to say that I've seen the protein harvesters perform their ghastly work. Orion Burger wiped out my home planet several years ago, and as far as I know, I'm the only survivor. That's terrible! And now they're planning to do the same thing to my planet! Just when I thought my life couldn't get any worse, now I'm not even at the top of the food chain anymore! What are you doing in the ventilation duct? Well, aside from getting my jumpsuit completely filthy, I'm spying on Zlark. I'm trying to collect evidence that intelligent life forms are being illegally harvested. So you're sneaking around through this ship, and those green guys don't even know that you're in here? You got that right. I'm a stowaway. Oh, if Slark found out I was here, I'd be history. Whatever you do, don't let him know that I'm here. Why the IQ tests? Why don't they just eat me? They have to test you because they aren't supposed to harvest intelligent life forms. Intelligent life is a very scarce resource in the universe. Yeah, I've noticed. What are my chances for passing these tests? Hmm, I wouldn't count on it. You don't look all that bright to me. Hey, I'll have you know that if they can stand the screaming, I can stand the pain. The tests aren't supposed to hurt. Those bozos were just zapping my head with electricity. It didn't exactly tickle. What was that thing you were waving in my face? I was just scanning your DNA for our records. I didn't mean for you to catch me. You weren't moving, so I figured that you had passed out or that you were dead. Dead? Come on, look around out there. Not many survived their neuroanalysis test. Hmm, I see what you mean. Uh-oh, I think I hear someone coming. Quickly, get away from the vent. And remember, you never saw me. <sighs> the nerve of that earthling passing one of my tests! Well, he won't feel like such a big man after he steps under my shrink <laughs> You're a lot heavier than you look, human. <laughs> Easy, you idiot. We might be eating them later. Uh, sorry, boss. Uh, didn't mean to bruise our dinner. All right, human. You squeaked by the first test, but that was the easy part. Now we start testing your higher mental functions, beginning with your survival instincts. Um, what's my gerbil cage doing here? You're about to find out. Flemix, activate the shrink down.
Oh. Oh. <laughs> Did I scare you? Yes. Good. Now listen up. Intelligence is defined as the capacity to adapt, survive, and flourish. This is where we test the survive part of that definition. To pass, all you have to do is find your way out of the cage. Got that? Well, sounds easy enough. You <laughs> will see about that. Flummox, issue him a weapon. Weapon? Uh, uh wait, wait a minute. What do I need a weapon for? So many questions for such a little man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting out of here will be a piece of cake. There's a door on the bottom level. Enormous! Phew. I should have cleaned out this cage when I had the chance. This apple stinks! Sounds like my gerbils are snoozing in there. There's the door! <laughs> I'll be out of here in no time! Hmm... I never noticed a magnet up there before. And it seems to be connected to that generator thingy. Gerbil chow! Best gerbil food money can buy! Keeps their coats nice and shiny. Well, at least I won't starve in here. I mean, just one of these peanuts could last me a month. I'd better not. Charlie, Louie, Winona, wake up, it's me, Wilbur! You're not my gerbils. You're not gerbils at all. I'm not getting out that way. Well, at least I got through the neuro test. 
I'll go grab some of that crazy hair wax again so I can concentrate on figuring out how to pass the second test. <laughs>